What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we are at the Benville Cemetery in Benville, Illinois, and I'm here to visit the grave of Robert Earl Hughes. At one time, he was the heaviest man in the entire country, probably even the entire world, who knows. So without further ado, let's get right into the story of Robert Earl Hughes, how he became so big, and how he met his unfaithful end. Robert Earl Hughes was born June 4th, 1926 in Monticello, Missouri, but others say he was born in Illinois. I personally think that smaller towns are going to want to claim Robert Earl Hughes as being born in their town for whatever tourism it would have garnered back in the days. That's neither here nor there. So when Robert Earl Hughes was born, uh, he was 11 pounds, 4 ounces at birth. That's a big baby, not anything out of the ordinary. And uh, later on, when he was about five and a half months old, he developed a case of whooping cough. And doctors attribute that to him having a ruptured thyroid gland and it ensuing a massive weight gain on his part. Uh, Robert's family was very, very poor. So he was born during the Depression era. Very, very poor. You had poor families and you had poor families. And Robert's family, they were very, very poor. I don't even think they had a vehicle. They didn't even get a truck uh, until Robert had later on got a job working in carnivals and uh, sideshows or freak shows or exhibits or whatever you want to call it. His family at night would go to the neighbor's farms and steal corn or eggs or whatever they could because they were starving. And I'm sure that the neighbors knew what they were doing, but they didn't pay them any minds because they knew that that family was very, very poor. By the time Robert was 10 years old, he weighed in at an astounding 378 some odd pounds. And by the time he turned 13, he was well over 550 pounds uh, at his heaviest ever uh, he weighed in at 1,071 pounds, but people claim that at his death, uh, he probably weighed uh, even more than that. Now, growing up as a kid, people described Robert Earl Hughes as being uh, uh, very congenial, uh, just a nice, happy-go-lucky kid. Now, you know, you want to go to school, you want to have a girlfriend, you want to have friends, but... Uh, you know, unfortunately, none of that was afforded to Robert. And a lot of people watching this video, including, you know, me just wondering out loud about it right now, you would think that Robert uh, probably ate a crazy amount of food. Now, like I said, the family was very, very poor. So it wasn't like this kid was going around like eating everybody's dinner. Now, he had a healthy appetite like anybody else would but not enough to gain that kind of weight i mean you you see these people on you know 600 pound life and they got these these uh, grotesque amounts of food that they're that they're eating i mean really nothing more than a drug in my opinion is what food is to them but robert didn't eat like that uh he a lot of times didn't even want seconds and he really ate not much more than his own brothers so this definitely was caused by that uh that thyroid gland and to help his family out uh, he had gotten a job uh, at uh some circus or another uh so let me explain how circuses and sideshows uh, detailing large people how they worked back in the day. So, in the uh, you know 18th century, turning into the 19th century, a, a freak show would have a fat man, and they weighed really no more than about 350 pounds. And then as time went on, the most they would be is 500 pounds. And oftentimes, 
uh, the sideshows, they would make them like they would stuff things in their shirt to make them look bigger. And a lot of times it'd be phonies. So when they got a hold of Robert, a lot of people thought it was fake. So they would tell Robert, okay, uh, you know, they would put him out on display, but you got to take your shirt off. And the reason why they had to take a shirt off is because one time when Robert was out on display, a drunk guy didn't believe that he was uh, that, that heavy. So I believe he had took like a cigar and put it out in his stomach. And needless to say, it wasn't fake. That was real. So they would often have him take off his shirt uh, just to display himself uh, to the crowd. Now, his um, traveling trailer for this uh, circus, he would have a living quarters in the front and then the back would be the display. So they would pull up into town, they would park his trailer, and then he would just kind of come in the back of it or what have you and then sit out there and then people would look at him and whatever that's basically how they did it uh back in those days and uh robert unlike most people that are his size i mean once you get around 800 pounds you could no longer walk on your own so you know a lot of times you see people on those tv shows or what have you they're bed bound they're, they're not getting up but uh, robert was the only person uh, ever to be that heavy that was able to walk unassisted and for the time that he was alive uh, he was the heaviest man in the world now he couldn't walk without his walking cane or walking stick or whatever you want to do he couldn't walk mm, i'm gonna guess he, he couldn't walk much more than than a, a few yards before he would start getting tired and then he would just have to kind of stop and kind of catch his breath or what have you. We are walking up upon the grave of Robert Earl Hughes. This is his grave right here. And uh, it says, world's heaviest man. So, on July 10th, 1958, of course, that is when uh, Robert passed away. Uh, he was in his trailer, and uh, he got real sick. He actually caught the measles from a, possibly a, a family member, and he was so heavy that he couldn't go to a doctor's office. So, the doctors had to come to his trailer, and... Uh, Due to the measles, uh, it caused uremia, which is, that's when your kidneys start uh, malfunctioning. And from that, uh, they believe that he died from, overall, he died of uh, congestive heart failure. Now, there was a, uh, I guess you would want to call it a, uh, a, a, an old wives' tale or whatever, that he was buried in a piano case. Uh, that's not the case, no pun intended. But uh, no, he was buried in a regular coffin. His coffin was uh, four and a half feet wide, seven feet long, and about, uh, I wanna say about three feet deep. And when he died in that trailer, they actually embalmed him right then and there in that trailer where he was. And uh, the only way they were able to get him out was via a forklift. You got some uh, coins and stuff that people have left and some keys. I don't understand the keys. So this is his grave. This is where he, he's uh, buried at right here. So you can kind of see how, how, how wide it might be right here where he's at. And uh, when he was brought here to the cemetery, uh, he was his coffin which was made by it was made by a company which is weird because the company that uh built his coffin uh, they were out of iowa and all of their employees were on summer break and when the boss heard that he died 
he got all the employees, <laughs> told him to get back to work because he wanted to be the one, you know, for publicity, that he was the one that made the coffin for the world's heaviest man. And uh, Robert was the world's heaviest man uh, for quite a few years after he died until uh, Patrick Duell took the spot from him. And then later on, uh, 10 or 11 other people have been heavier than Robert, uh, the largest being uh, 1,400 pounds, which that's really hard to believe that somebody could weigh 1,400 pounds. But that's what they say. That's what they say, so you got to believe it if it's on the internet, correct? Yeah. Okay, well, rest in peace to Robert Earl Hughes. Just an uh, interesting story and an interesting grave. And um, just to let you guys know, uh, Robert Wadlow, uh, the world's tallest man, I did a video of him a few years back. Uh, he's also buried in Illinois. He's in Alton. I believe that's the name of the town. And uh, both Roberts were actually uh, pen pals. They'd never met. I mean, that would have been an interesting collab, right? Huh? You guys are always talking about collabs. That would be an interesting collab. The world's heaviest man and the world's tallest man. Uh, but they never did get a chance to meet. And Robert, he loved, I forgot to mention this, uh, he loved to read. And he loved meeting people. Uh, he, he, you know, being from a small town, he, he loved human interaction. You know? Yeah, just a, a very kind and nice, a nice, a nice guy, a nice kid. Died young, only 32 years old. And if he was born today, that would have never happened because they would have fixed that problem. But that was a medical problem that, you know, Back in those days, you know, we couldn't fix. So rest in peace to Mr. Robert Earl Hughes. Okay, guys, I've talked your ear off enough. I am out of here. Oh, by the way, I think I forgot to mention when they brought, uh, see that road right there? When they pulled up with his coffin, uh, it was uh, on rollers, and it took 12 guys to roll it from that street down right here to this grave. And I believe a uh, crane uh, had to lower it down. And there was about 2,000 people at his funeral. That's a lot of people. And this is a very, very small town, 2,000 people. Okay, now I think I've uh, told you guys everything that I wanted to tell you about this man and his story. And I'm probably leaving a good portion out, but um, I gave you the rough gist of, uh, of him and, and what happened. Okay, guys, I'm out of here. I'm hitting the road. I will catch up with you on the next video. Be good, y'all. Peace out.